Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Welcome, friends. Welcome. Amen. We serve an awesome God. Welcome, friends. Welcome. Glad to see you guys again. <clears throat> praise God. We serve an awesome God. Thank you all so much for joining this broadcast. Amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Really looking forward to sharing the word of God with you guys on tonight. God bless you, my sister, all the way in London, right? Amen. Amen. Oh, we serve an awesome God. Welcome. Listen, please, you who are just logging on, invite some of your friends and followers to be a part of this broadcast. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. I may come to London this year. I'm not sure yet. May be coming to London. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Hello, hello. Praise God. Awesome, awesome God. Listen, you know when the devil begins to attack, it's a sign that he's nervous because God's about to do something awesome, awesome in your life. <laughs> Praise God. So if any of you have been experiencing any kind of attacks this week, you shouldn't be surprised. That means you're real close to a breakthrough. That means you're very close to God doing something extraordinary in your life. Amen. So listen, if you're on an iPhone, swipe to the right and invite you. Amen. Amen. Invite your followers. If you're on an Android, swipe from the bottom up and invite your followers. Praise God. You can also tweet this broadcast on, on Twitter. Amen. God bless you. My sister down there and Mrs. Garcia all the way in Fresno, California. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome all of you guys. I love getting on you and taking time out, sharing God's word with you. Amen. Praise God. I took a, I took a, took a break yesterday. God knows I needed, I needed the rest yesterday. Amen. God bless you too, my brother. I have a Chris from the Bahamas, which is my cousin, and we have another Christopher. Christopher here is always in contact with me. <laughs> Praise God. Are you excited about the word of God on tonight? <clears throat> Where God guides, he provides. There's provision. Listen, there is provision for the vision. Amen. I said, there's provision for the vision. God's, God's will, God's timing, and God's way. And I believe, I believe personally, I believe one of the most important things the people of God can learn is how to discern God's will for our lives. You know, sometimes we find ourselves frustrated, not knowing what to do, which way to go. But if you begin to pay attention real close and really tune in to the Holy Ghost, you'd start realizing that the, that heaven, that God is signaling to you and giving you natural, physical signs that, that, that your season has changed and understanding when that season changed. And we, 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 we going to go over some of those signs tonight, amen, that will help you recognize that, that your season is up somewhere. And it's, it's, it's God's trying to bring you into a new season. He's trying to bring new direction and praise God. Well, listen, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open my heart up to you guys. And, you know, me and my wife, we've been serving the Lord for a long time. I've been ordained into the ministry almost 19 years. And I'm telling you, I'm going to open my heart up to you guys. I'm going to share exactly some of the signs in the natural that, me, that God gives to me and my wife to let us know that a season is over. And also, we're going to look in the Bible because seeing it in the Word of God is actually more important than just seeing it in our lives. When you see that it happened and men and women of God lives in the Bible, it will better equip you to surrender to God's direction in your life. Amen? Listen, let's go to God in prayer. Let's go to God in prayer. And we're going to jump into the word of God in 1 Kings 17. And listen here, I, I, we're going to pour it all out to you. We're going to give you all of it. Amen. Everything God have for you tonight, we are going to give it to you. Because I'm telling you, God is trying to usher some of you into a new season. And because you don't understand it, you're resisting God. You're resisting change. Change is coming into your life. Daniel said it's God who changes the times and the seasons. And if you don't understand when, when a season is over in your life, you could actually overstay a season in your life. Amen. And if, if you overstay a season in your life, you will bring 
you'll bring a lengthy unnecessary of suffering on yourself that you don't deserve. Are you hearing me? But let's go to God in prayer and let's jump into his word. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I give you praise. I give you glory, O oh God, for everyone that's a part of this broadcast, whether it be through their computers, through their smartphones, God, however they are watching this broadcast. I pray that you would speak to them. I pray that you would minister to them. I pray for the, I pray God for a spirit of revelation. I pray for the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, oh God. I pray for a mighty teaching anointing that will break the word of God down to the point that even a child would be able to understand and discern God's will for their life. Make it simple, make it plain. Help us, God. Help us open our eyes, open our ears to hear, open our hearts to receive from you tonight, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Someone say a good amen right there. Amen. Let me jump into this. So this is what we're talking about tonight. Where God guides, he also provides God's will, God's timing, and God's way. Amen. So important for you to understand. Now listen. We're going to start, we're going to go into 1 Kings chapter 17. Look at what the Bible says. The Bible says, And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives. As the Lord God of Israel lives. Before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. He confronted a very wicked king, powerful man of God, Elijah. He was willing to risk it all. He took on a whole kingdom with the help of God. So he, he confronted, he confronted Ahab and he told him, he said, look, everything around here is about to dry up. Amen. God's going to get your attention one way or the other. Are you hearing me? Now watch this. So Elijah was obedient to God. See, that's one of the things that unlocks God's supernatural provision in your life. You have to be willing to be obedient. You know, see, provision is conditional to a certain degree. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19, if you be willing and obedient, if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Do you see that? Supernatural provision is connected to your obedience. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1, the Bible says, if you, if you hearken diligently under the voice of the Lord your God and obey his commands, the Bible says, these blessings will come on you and overtake you. Are you hearing me, somebody? So provision is connected to your obedience to God's voice and his will for your life. Amen. You know, we live in a generation who believe they can do anything, who think they can say anything, who can live their life any kind of lifestyle, and they expect God to still work on their behalf. It don't work that way, friend. If God's going to be obligated to you, you are going to have to be obligated to being obedient to his voice at all costs. It's not about following the crowd. It's about following the cloud of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Because where he guides... He provides. Where there's a will, there's a way. Hello, somebody. We serve an awesome God. Now watch this. So after Elijah was willing to risk his life and obey God, the Bible says, and the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, the word of God came to Elijah. It was the Holy Spirit that enabled Elijah to hear the voice of God. Listen to what God spoke to this prophet. He said, get thee hence and turn the eastward. I want you to turn, I want you to set your eyes on the east and hide yourself by the brook Cherith that is before Jordan and it shall be, watch this, it shall be that thou shall drink of the brook and I, man, these words really jumped out to me when I was going over this passage. God said, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. I remember Pastor John Osteen, Joel Osteen dad. I heard a message he preached years ago. 
on a tape called A Place Called There. Listen, when you get there, the supernatural provision of God is going to be waiting on you. So God clearly told Elijah, he said, I want you to turn to the east. And I want you to go by a brook that is before Jordan. And when you get there, I have commanded the ravens to come and bring your provision. God said, I have commanded, I have commanded the ravens to feed you. My God. Listen, when the Holy Spirit begins to give you God's new direction for your life, you have to be willing and obedient. Are you hearing me? Don't resist the voice of God. Don't resist the voice of God. Let me tell you one of the signs that you know a season is over. You begin to become very uncomfortable. There's a serious, excuse me one second. There's a serious dissatisfaction that comes into your life. You are not satisfied and you are not fulfilled. Listen, if you are feeling a deep dissatisfaction and discontentment on the inside of you. Listen to me. That's one of the signals that's coming from the Holy Spirit that God's getting ready to usher you into a new season and you have to prepare yourself to let go of that old season. Amen. Are you still here? Now we're going to go a little deeper because we're going to see, we're going to see some signs that's taking place right in Elijah's life to let him know the season is over. Are you hearing me? Now watch this. Another thing that happens is, and another thing that happens is people who and you were really close, they become to be a distant in the relationship. You are not as close as you were. Amen. Misunderstanding even begins to happen. People who were in love with you, they kind of begin to back away from you. The favor you had with people, that favor begins to drain and it also begins to wean. All of these are signals from the Holy Ghost that, hey, this season here is over. God's probably calling you to move on. Are you hearing me? And some of us, listen, where we make some of our greatest mistakes when these signals begin to come is you're afraid of the unknown. You, you don't know what's around the corner. So you are trying to cling on. You are trying to hang on to the familiar. Because at least in the familiar, you know how to make certain things work. You kind of have a, you have a system down, so to speak. You, you know how to make this system work for this level and this place and this location where you are. And what's happening is that system, God is going to make sure that system begins to fail you and disappoint you to get your attention to let you know the season is over. You better put your faith, your trust in God, and it's time to get alone and seek God and open your heart up for the Holy Spirit to bring you into a new season, a new place, and give you God's new mandate, His new direction, and His new will for your life. Are you listening to me? I'm telling you, one of the things that happen, we realize is that you begin to lose favor with all kinds of people. Losing favor with people is a sign in a, lot of, in a lot of places in the Bible that this season is absolutely over. Are you hearing me? Don't try to prolong a season that God is trying to close because you can bring unnecessary harm and unnecessary suffering to your life. You can even open yourself up to unnecessary demonic attacks. Are you hearing me? You want to be in the will of God because where he guides, he provides. Where he guides, there's his divine protection there. Are you listening to me? Praise God. Now watch, let's move on a little further in the story. So God told Elijah, I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. You see that? And verse 5 says, so he went and did. You see that? So he went and did according under the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt by the, by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. So Elijah obeyed what God told him to do. And as a result of his obedience, verse 6 says, And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank from the brook. So exactly where God directed Elijah, right where the Holy Spirit directed Elijah, 
there was provision. How do we know it's the Holy Spirit? Because another place, I believe it's in chapter 18, that talks about the Holy Spirit moving Elijah, the Holy Spirit coming on Elijah. So the Holy Spirit coming on Elijah enabled him to hear God's voice and discern God's new direction for his life. His antennas were up. Man, he was in tune. He was listening. And I pray for you right now in the name of Jesus that you be sensitive, that you recognize that that this that one season is over. God's trying to usher you into a whole new season. And listen, what I want you to realize, what I want you to realize is sometimes a new season may be another geographical location for your life. It may be a change in your address. It may be a change in city. It may be a change in country. Like in, Eli in uh, Abraham's case, God spoke to Abraham and said, get from among your family, from among your kindred, from out of your country, and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. Are you hearing me? In my case, in my case, I'm from the Bahamas originally, but to be in God's perfect will, I had to leave the Bahamas and move to America. Why? Because this is God's perfect will for my life. And where he guides, he provides. Where there's a will, there's a way. Are you listening to me? That doesn't mean it's always going to be easy. But if you are in the perfect will of God, he will move heaven and earth if he have to. If he have to open up the Red Sea, he'll do it. If he have to dry up the Jordan River, if he have to knock down Jericho walls, God is going to make a way when you are in his will. He is obligated to take care of you. Are you listening to me, my friends? In some cases, it may be a change of job. Listen, I know I gave, I know I'm very careful with the advice I give. You know, if I don't feel God's given me nothing specific for you, I'm not going to say nothing. I'll just share Bible stories with you. And in one case, I, I know of a person right this second. They are suffering beyond measure on a job because they are prolonging. They are prolonging that season. God's trying to move them on. He wants them to believe him for another job, not, not to just jump up and leave cold turkey. You know, sometimes that can be foolishness unless God clearly tells you to do that. But listen, if, you will lose, if you've lost favor with the boss, if everyone on that job hates you, can't stand your guts, it just may be a sign that you need to move on with your life, friends. Are you hearing me? And, and, and how, how is another door going to open unless you start applying for another job? You got to take a step of faith. But I'm telling you, when God closes one door, he opens up a bigger and a better door. And this is where trust come in. You have to trust him. The Bible says, lean not to your own understanding. Are you hearing me? Trust in the Lord your God with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways... In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Do you see that? So when you yield to God, when you trust him, he will direct you, friends. God knows where the provision is. He knows where the promotion is. He knows exactly how to take the idea that he's given you, that business idea, and turn it into reality. But it, it may mean that you have to separate yourself from people. You may have to change location. Are you hearing me? And this is where you got to trust the voice of the Holy Spirit. Make sure the Holy Ghost is confirming it to you through the word of God. Make sure the Holy Ghost is confirming it to you through wise counsel. Make sure he's confirming it to you through people who can't either, who can't lose or benefit by the decision that you're making. Because the Bible says, in the multitude of counselors, there's safety. That word safety means God gives you the victory through human agents. Are you hearing me? Let's move on here. Let's go a little deeper. If you are just joining this broadcast, please, if you're on an iPhone, swipe to the right and invite some of your followers to be a part. If you're on an Android, swipe from the bottom up and, and invite your followers to be a part of this broadcast. This is very important. We are talking about God, where God guides, he provides. God's will, God's timing. 
and God's way. And we're looking at the life of Elijah, because when you look at this great prophet of God, Elijah was one of the greatest men of God in the Bible. And when we see how God worked in the life of Elijah and other men of God in the Bible, we can readily surrender and submit and realize this is God leading me. This is God guiding me because I'm, I'm getting confirmation from the word of God, from the men and women of God in the Bible that I'm reading about. Now watch this. Now Elijah is by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And the ravens are coming to bring this man bread in the morning. He's, the raven is giving him bread and meat. Man, that's enough to make a sandwich. Glory to God. Praise God. And so can you imagine... <laughs> you, you're ready for the Holy Spirit to change. He may be changing you. Amen. He may be changing your season. I believe he is. Now watch this. Can you imagine all Elijah have to do is wake up in the morning and look up and there, there comes the ravens bringing him his, his food to make his sandwich. And he have a supply of water right there by this brook. And he's drinking water, fresh water from the brook and he's eating a sandwich. Now listen, what happens to us sometimes in some seasons that we are in, we begin to become complacent. Are you hearing me? We become to, we, we start, like I said earlier, depending on the system rather than depending on the God who put us in that season and gave us the system. And now watch what happened with Elijah. <coughs> Excuse me, because I believe this is happening to some of you. Verse 7 says, And it came to pass, after a while, that means Elijah was enjoying that season for a long time with everything working out, everything falling into place, provision left, right, and center. He had nothing to worry about. But verse 7 says, God had to do something to get his attention. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. As soon as the brook dried up, that was a signal to Elijah when the provision dried up and there was not sin in his life. He knew he was right with God. He knew he was walking in obedience to God. Excuse me. He did the last thing God told him to do. Listen, when all of the provision dried up, that was a signal from God to Elijah. This season is over here at the brick Cherith. It's time to move on. I've got bigger and better things ahead of you. It's time to move. This location, I'm done with this location. It's time to move. So the Bible says, as soon as the brook dried up, verse 8 says, and the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, I listen, we got to pay attention. We got to pay attention. They've been promising you for the last seven years. They're going to give you promotion. And that promotion ain't come yet, friend. Friend, wake up and smell the coffee. Your season's over. God's got bigger. God's got better for you. But it's not going to happen unless you take a step of faith and begin to look for something else. Amen? You are probably too complacent there. You know the Bible talks about God leading the children of Israel in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 32. The Bible says, as an eagle stirs its nest, that's exactly how the Lord lead them. Listen, when the mama eagle is ready for the baby eaglets to fly, she knows with all of that feather, she knows with all of that feathers in the nest, it's nice, it's warm, it's cuddly, it's comfortable. She knows those baby eaglets she know they ain't going to leave that nest. They, why leave it? It's comfortable here. Mama's bringing food to us. There ain't no reason to move. But the mother eagle begins to yank all the feathers out that nest. And once she take the feathers out the nest, the baby eagle will try to go lie down, but he would get stick in his side from the sticks and the prickles that's inside the nest. And that baby eagle begins to become very uncomfortable. And the mama eagle is getting the baby eagle uncomfortable because she knows that it's time for this baby eagle to fly. Are you hearing me? And God is making your nest very uncomfortable because he knows it's time for you to fly. He knows it's time for you to go to a whole nother level. And if God don't make it uncomfortable, you will stay and perish 
in that old season of being complacent, of being comfortable. That's why people will even turn on you. Sometimes God will use misunderstandings to get us in God's perfect will. Look at Joseph. His brothers, they got jealous of him. Oh yeah, they got jealous of him, but God allowed it to happen to get Joseph in this perfect will. When did they make Joseph uncomfortable? They ripped his coat off of him. They took him and they threw him into a pit. Now, wait a minute. If you read what Joseph said when his brothers came after Pharaoh had already promoted him, Joseph said, brothers, I know you thought this was you, but this was God sending me before you to preserve a posterity in the earth. It was God sending me before you guys to preserve you from famine. You know what I always say when I when I read that statement? I said, wow, God surely have a strange way of sending us. So when Joseph brothers was stripping his coat off and throwing him into the bottom of a pit and selling him over to the Ishmaelites for silver, this was God's way. This was God's divine guidance for Joseph's life. What a, what a strange way to lead someone, but this was God. Are you hearing me? That's why Joseph was able to look at his brothers and said, you meant it for evil, but this was God all along. He meant it for my good. My God, God's talking to someone. People are turning against you. They are misunderstanding you and you are trying to work it out. You are trying to figure out what's going on. Everything around you is drying up. Listen to me real good. God is trying to get your attention. He's trying to let you know this season is over. Let it go. Give it up. Surrender. Quit hanging on to it. If you hang on to this season too long, you are going to cost yourself unnecessary harm, unnecessary stress, and unnecessary pressure. Is someone listening to me? Are you listening? Listen, he, Jesus even told his disciples in Matthew chapter 10, verse 23, Jesus said, look guys, when they persecute you in this city, flee into another city. So God have to use people rising against you sometimes to give you a signal that the season is over. Amen. Can I get a good amen right there? Watch this. Let's go a little deep into the word of God. So after the brook dried up, the Bible says the word of the Lord came unto Elijah saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongs to Zidon, and dwell there. In other words, it's time to move, Elijah. It's time to change your geographical location. I got a new place for you to live. Are you hearing me? I have another means of, of provision to take care of you, but to, but to get to the provision, you are going to have to get up from where you are and get to the next geographical location that I'm telling you about. And when you get there, I have commanded, man, I feel the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Roko Satalababa. Mandele bebe shata rababasa Roko to robo shata Mandele bebe robo shata God we praise you Hallelujah God we thank you Jesus Thank you Holy Ghost For getting our attention oh God Thank you Holy Ghost For leading us along God God we praise you My God my God I feel the anointing Praise God Shakarababasata. Glory to God. So the Bible says, God says, get thee to Zarephath. You got to get there. You got to get there. The provision's not here. My will was cherished, but now my will have changed. Now my will for your life at this place and this time and this stage in your life, at this season, now my will for your life is a place call Zarephath and I have commanded a widow woman to sustain you there are you listening I love Elijah because look what the Bible says in verse 10 the Bible says so he arose and went to Zarephath he did this man knew how to obey the voice of God he realized that if he is going to be successful, if he is going to prosper, if he is going to be sustained, if he is going to make it, he have to obey the last thing. 
God told him to do. Who is it that I'm preaching to tonight? The Holy Ghost is using uncomfortable situations. People are attacking you. He is trying to get your attention to let you know, friend, daughter, son, I've got so much more for you. I've got something better for you. He's trying to get your attention. But you got to say, Lord, I realize, God, I thought this was the devil, but now I realize all along this was you, God, trying to get my attention because you're trying to change my season. Man, I feel that. Someone's season is being changed right now. Someone's season have been changing since you came into 2016, but you got to surrender to it. You got to yield to the change that God's trying to bring into your life. Because if you hang on to that old season, you're going to pay a price that you don't want to pay. Are you hearing me? You're going to pay an unnecessary price. You would even suffer unnecessary losses if you stay in an old season too long. Watch here. So the Bible says, so he arose and went to Zarephath. <clears throat> Excuse me. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering sticks. The widow woman was right there that God told him about. So now, exactly what God told him is happening. Everything's beginning to fall into place. That's how you know the new season that God's calling you into. When you step into it, this is how you know you're in the right place. Because everything begins to fall into place. When God closes one door, he opens another door. When God moves old people out of your life, he brings better people into your life. Are you listening to me? Watch this. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called her and said, fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. So Elijah is testing the waters now. He knows God spoke to him. And what God told him is now beginning to come to pass. This is sign. And notice the provision. The, he, he did not begin to see God's word fulfilled in his life until he reached a new place that God told him about. And as soon as his foot, as soon as he entered into the gate of the city, the first person to greet him was somebody that God had told him about. So he said to the widow, get me a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, see that? She's obeying. She's going to get the man of God some water. And as she was going to fetch it, he called her and said, bring me, I pray thee, a little morsel of bread in your hand. I've been eating bread and water all this time. I just need a little something to eat. The Bible says, and she said, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake but a handful of meal in a barrel on a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die. Isn't this amazing how God works? Normally when God brings someone into your life, normally it's, uh, in a lot of cases, it's because both of you have what each other need to accomplish God's will for that season. Watch this. Elijah had the voice of God. She had the provision of God. Watch this. Elijah said, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. <clears throat> Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Jesus told Peter, go down to the lake, take your fishing line with the hook on it, and cast it in the lake, and catch the Catch your fish, the first fish that comes up. Take the money out of the fish mouth. Pay my taxes and yours. Seek first the kingdom of God. Are you hearing me? Elijah said, for thus said the Lord, God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste. Neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. In other words, God's going to supernaturally provide for you until the famine is over. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her entire house ate many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not. Neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of the Lord which he spoke by Elijah. Are you hearing me? Friends, provision, listen to me. 
there's provision for the vision. Where he guides, he provides. But you are going to have to be willing to obey the promptings and the leading of the Holy Spirit. If God's, God's trying to move you out of the old season, you are trying to hang on to it. You're going to have to say, Lord, by faith, I surrender. I let go of the old season. I let go of the old direction. And I open my heart to the new direction. I welcome the new season into my life. And as soon as Joseph reached into the place where he was sold as a slave, Potiphar got Joseph. And Joseph began to work with Potiphar. And the Bible says, Potiphar recognized that God was with Joseph and that everything Joseph touched, God made it to prosper. That's the new season. Everything you touch in this new season, it's going to prosper. And even the ungodly are going to recognize, my God, God's with this person. And the Bible says, Potiphar promoted Joseph and made him Lord over his house. Are you hearing me? Your promotion is in the next season. Your pr the new season is actually here, but your promotion <clears throat> is going to manifest when you obey God. You got to obey God. I say you have to obey God. Let him lead you. Let him guide you because he knows exactly how to take care of you. I want to pray for you, friend. I want to pray for you that you be sensitive. I want to pray for you that the Holy Spirit would give you discernment, that you would recognize the new season, that you'd recognize the new location, that you'd recognize the new people that God's about to bring into your life. Father, I pray for my friends, my brothers, my sisters that's on this broadcast. Give them wisdom. I pray for sharper discernment in their lives. I pray for sharper discernment. God, I pray that they would be sensitive to the voice of the Holy Ghost. I pray that they would be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. God, the old season, the doors closed behind them. God, open the new doors before them. Let them see the new opportunities. Let them see the new possibilities, God. Because your word says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think, according to the power that works in us. I thank you for the leading of the Holy Spirit. I thank you for a new direction in their life. I thank you for provision, supernatural provision. It's awaiting them in that new location. God, I praise you. I give you glory. I give you honor. Friends, we love you guys. We appreciate you. We really, listen, we appreciate you guys. We appreciate you guys more than you know. We love you guys. Obey God. Let go of the old. Let the old season go. God has better for you. He has bigger and he have better for you. Who received the word of the Lord on tonight? Say, Lord, I receive it. I receive your word. I receive your new direction for my life. I welcome the new connections that you're about to bring in my life. I thank you for promotion. I thank you for provision, God. In the name of Jesus. When you get to that next place, God wants you to know. God said, I have commanded. I have commanded. I have commanded. A group of people, they are waiting on you. They are looking for you. Are you listening to me? They are looking for you. They are waiting on you. And when you show up, they're going to recognize you. When you show up to that new job, when you show up to fill out that job application, they are going to recognize you. they just waiting on you. Are you listening to me? God bless you guys. We love you. We appreciate you. We want God's best for you. Follow the Holy Ghost. He is going to lead you into God's perfect will for your life. The Bible says that we may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Walk through the open door. Are you here? Are you listening to me? The first door may just be his acceptable will, but that's good enough to get you started because eventually it's going to lead you into his perfect will. If every other door is shut behind you, friends, and there's an open door in the front of you. Sometimes God uses closed and open doors to bring us into a new season. Welcome the new season. I'm telling you, welcome the new season 
God's going to blow your mind. I say, God's going to blow your mind. I feel this thing. This, this is just burning in my spirit. I feel such a fresh anointing from the Holy Ghost. I feel a fresh anointing. I feel a fresh wind of the Spirit of God blowing you. Just blowing you. Just blowing you into the new season. Just blowing you into the new season. Blowing you into the new season. Blowing you into the new season. Into the new season. Into the new season. Just welcome it. Just, just yield to the wind of the Holy Ghost. Put up your sail. Say, God, here I go. I'm moving with the Holy Ghost. I'm moving with the Holy Ghost. I surrender to the Holy Ghost. Praise God. God bless you guys. I look forward to being with you again on Thursday night, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Be looking forward for us to jump back into the Word of God on tomorrow as well. Amen. We love you guys. Tell your friends about this broadcast. This broadcast has been a blessing to you. Tell your friends about it. But I'm asking you, if you are enjoying this ministry, go sow a seed, five bucks, ten bucks, whatever you can do. Go to the ministry website, which is seanpinder.net, and just sow a seed. Amen. No seed is too small. No seed is too big. God will honor your friends. He will bless you, and he will multiply what you give to him, and he'll give it back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure you meet, it's going to be measured to you again. We love you guys. God bless you. You guys take care. I'll see you again on tomorrow. Bye-bye.